You're here with Kirk Boxleiter, one of the, uh, what, just the man, the legend, who tore up Scans Daily, who gives Dan Slott nightmares, who makes Stephen Wacker whack his own head in frustration. How are you doing? Thank you for coming, man. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be here. It's uh, good, to, good of you to come uh, at least somewhere within uh, driving distance of, uh, of my neck of the woods. So, Dude, you're an hour away. I drove three hours. <laughs> and through, I cross international boundaries. I didn't even know you were coming. Well, I didn't know either until about yesterday when I decided that I had, I had done just about as much as I needed to for this week since I'm going to be on the clock again tomorrow. So... Why not? Mm -hmm. And right. right now we're, uh, well, I don't know what we're going to be doing right now. Um, yeah. I just kind of signed on for the ride. So right on. Buy that... the ticket, take the ride. Yeah. Oh, God. Jesus, that movie. I still haven't seen that movie. Which, Fear and Loathing? Yeah, no. Oh, wait. Is that what, that's what it's from? I thought it was the movie with the dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be... Uh, well, it's uh, it's one of Hunter S. Thompson's quotes in uh, in uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, I suppose I could see where you could you could maybe mix that up a little bit with Big Lebowski. Yeah. Um, Both movies of which I have not seen. Well, see, this is you have an internet connection. <laughs> That's you know the movies that you haven't seen. It's very simple. I mean, when I recommend that people watch Videodrome, I find a free copy of Videodrome online and uh, I link it to them. Oh, uh, free. You mean that rental service online, which is completely legal, I might add? Or some, I, I mean, it's located somewhere. The main servers, I think, are now located in North Korea. Yeah. Well, okay. it's, it's more along the lines of... Uh, of Temporary autonomous zones, uh, as Hawking may refer to it, the uh, the pirate utopias, ah. uh, where you surprising a lot of it just straight up on YouTube. Of course, it gets pulled down within you know a few days to a few weeks, but that's the whole point of the temporary autonomous zone is you're not constructing a permanent haven from the law. You are you're simply setting up camp, and then when the authorities roll in, you move on. I, I gotta admit, you sound almost exactly like how I, I, I didn't, I'm not sure how to picture your voice, but you sound and you move and you act just like I knew you would. Well, just, just from I, I, from your years of, of spurring on live journal with obnoxious Marvel writers and editors and most of editorial. Well, it's I, I, I write the same way that I speak. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never seen a, a division between the two, just like I don't see a division between a high and low culture. It is all it is all culture. <laughs> yeah, so. I was more. How come you don't seem to get much attention from DC Comics? It's like Marvel is the one that guns for you the most. Well, because DC, in spite of their current idiocy, which is, of course what is what happens when you hire the man who sunk Marvel Comics in the 90s with wait, Bob wait. Harris. Who, wait, who did that? Oh, Bob Harris, uh, the walking apocalypse uh, of editorial. He was basically the man who, ru who ruined Marvel so badly that when the uh, first X-Men film came out, Mar Marvel actually paid attention to the fact that, hey, we have a blockbuster motion picture here, and we have exactly zero readers. Maybe we should look at the source of that. And so, I mean, it takes a lot to get fired as the IC of, of Marvel and its fire, Roman fire culture era, but by God, Bob Harris did it. Wow. But, but, see, the thing is, for the most part, DC is smart enough not to engage on a personal level. I mean, this is... This is the whole uh, wannabe frat boy mindset of Marvel, is that it's all about, you know, this whip it out and measure it contest. They're basically a bunch of folks who never outgrew being online fan fiction writers, and so they conduct their warfare in that fashion. Paul Levitz would never do that. Paul Levitz had some issues, but Paul Levitz would never start a scrap with somebody one-on-one -on -one because 
he knew that that was a bad idea. Uh, actually, I just talked with Kevin J. Anderson, who's close friends oh. with him, uh, about the novels he wrote for DC, Last Days of uh, Krypton. And I asked him about editorial conflict because interference, which is what a lot of DC writers are getting upset about. In fact, many have left over it. And he said he got zero. He said, Paul, I'm going to write these. Paul got on the phone said, hey, Kevin J. Anderson is going to write this. And that was that. Well, Kevin J. Anderson, um, how should I put this? I think he has a sensibility that is more suited to perhaps the modern DC mindset because this is a man who has who has made his bones working with a lot of established franchises. He um, he did of course the uh, Star, Star Wars. Yeah, you know, the Star Wars. You know all those collections of different uh, different short stories from Jabba's Palace on down before they got jossed by George Lucas when you know somebody pointed out to him, um, George, didn't you authorize these earlier? No. Oh well, you know. I'm sure they'll figure out some way to reconcile it. You know, I have billions, um, <laughs> and and of course he uh, he worked with uh, with Brian Herbert. So that was kind of that was kind of working with an established franchise twice over because Brian Herbert, the son of Frank Herbert, um, Frank Herbert being the uh, being the creator of the of the Dune series. So Brian Herbert was trying to keep his dad's legacy alive, and Kevin J. Anderson was working with Brian Herbert to keep Brian's dad's legacy alive. So it was, you know, you get if you if you had like, you know, Alan Dean Foster brought in to help Kevin J. Anderson help Brian Herbert, then that would be the point at which the inception horn would sound because we would need to go deeper. Oh my you, this this is just a whole wing of sci-fi fandom I know next to nothing about. I mean, you're doing good with the Tell, uh, talking about Bob Harris and uh, the Marvel burning down, and then you went into Dune. I'm like, my eyes went glossy, and that was that. Yeah. So we're gonna get here. Come on, get in the shot with Denny. Come on, oh, yeah. give it, get in the shot. Here we got these two awesome, handsome dudes, and you're going to interview the him ant and the tree and the Hobbit. Yes. Oh, gee, and there he goes with that other. Guy In Gardner meets Magneto. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so probably get some more footage. This is definitely going to go up later on. Hey, so sign up for now. All right.